Hi, I'm Jeffrey Lunn. I want to welcome you to today's lecture. Today we're going to be talking about shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And they all are pretty big subjects, but we're going to concentrate on shutter speed and then touch on ISO. But we're going to see how all three work together in this lecture and in lectures that follow. The shutter controls the time that the camera is open to incoming light and the aperture controls the flow of light that enters the camera. Uh, you know, the camera is very much like the human eye. It has uh, a lens in front and then that focuses the image and then it, the image hits the optic nerve which uh, is like the retina and then that translates the image to the brain. So the camera shutter opens and closes to let light in like our eyelids. Uh, the camera shutter is fast and it can be opened and closed in a four thousandth of a second or it can be left open for up to 20 seconds. Now the fastest human blink is about a tenth of a second. The camera has an iris to control the amount of light it lets in just like the human eye. On a camera we call this the f-stop or the aperture. They mean the same thing. These are common aperture sizes and the corresponding F numbers. The, the wide one up in the upper left is 1.8 and then you'll see that the smaller one is F22. So note that the higher the F number, the smaller the opening. And uh, you might think of the F numbers as fractions. So let's look at F4. We'll call that one quarter and it's a lot bigger than F16, uh, which is one, you know, like one sixteenth. Um, so let's just think about these F stops as fractions. Now, uh, this is the shutter curtain opening and closing in a digital camera. You see on the left, the curtain is closed, and then when it opens up, it lets light in uh, to hit the sensor. On the right, the shutter curtain passes over the sensor at different speeds. So the slit can get smaller and smaller and the speed at which the curtain travels across the film speeds up. So again, let's look at the left hand one. The shutter's closed. In the middle, the shutter is open for a 200th of a second or longer and the entire sensor is fully exposed to light all at once. When you get faster shutter speeds than a 200th or a 250th, then you don't get uh, the curtain being open all the way. So on the right, the shutter is open for a 300th of a second, so that slit passes over the sensor, but it never exposes the entire sensor at, at all at one time. So anything faster than a 250th of a second is going to have a slit that is a little smaller. Uh, you can see that in the right-hand example, uh, where the shutter is traveling at a two thousandth of a second, the slit is really quite narrow and it's also going to travel across the film very quickly. Now these are the apertures that allow the same amount of light to pass when the shutter opens. So in other words, uh, you have a aperture of f11 in the center and below it you'll see that the shutter is open for a 300th of a second. On the right, the aperture is smaller, it's f22, and the shutter is open for a longer period, a 60th of a second. Now, both of these examples let in the same amount of light, uh, but the characteristics are different, and that's what we're going to focus on in the rest of this program. So, again, you are looking for the right balance of aperture to shutter speed because uh, different combinations will let in the same amount of light but it changes the character of the photo. So uh, how do you know what your shutter speed is and what your aperture is? Uh, so we'll, for this lesson, have our camera in the P mode. That's the program mode. And in the P mode, the camera will always balance the shutter and the aperture and the P mode opens up a bunch of other um, 
features on your camera. You can control the flash, you can change the ISO. The P mode is our friend. That is really just taking off the training wheels. We don't want to do too many photographs in this class in the auto mode. You can, you're already doing that. There's no reason to take the class if you're just going to stay in auto. So on, on this, you see that on the number on the left is 1 25th of a second. That's controlling the shutter. That's the shutter speed. And on the right, it's f5.6. That's the name of that aperture opening is 5.6. So let's see how aperture and shutter speed work together to control the amount of light. So imagine filling a small glass with water and um, that is a very small opening setting. So it'll take, let's say, a second for the water to pass through uh, so uh, to fill that glass. So you see the hose is kind of choked off and less flow requires more time. So we have a small aperture on the left, but we want to fill the glass of water. So we have to allow more time for the water to flow into the glass. On the lower example, we want to fill a glass of water. So we use a wider opening setting. So the water will, you know, the flow will increase. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to cut down the time uh, that we have the hose on because more flow requires less time, a shorter shutter speed. We use shutter speeds to limit the time light is allowed to enter the camera. This photo was taken with a very fast shutter speed and it stopped the action. So this was, uh, I'm not sure what this shutter speed was, but uh, it, it's fast enough to stop the action. Let's just call it a 250th of a second. So this shot was taken at a slow shutter speed and the action was blurred as a result. The shutter was open for uh, a long enough for the subject to move during that time. So in looking at these two images, which image has the fast shutter speed? Now, how can you tell which exposure has the fast shutter speed and which has the slower shutter speed? Again, in review, the upper left is the slower shutter speed. It's a longer shutter speed. It, the camera is open long enough to register movement. On the lower right, the shutter is very quick and it stops the action. So it's a fast shutter speed. Now, the P mode uh, on the LCD displays uh, show both shutter and aperture. This happens to be a Nikon display. You get this by touching the info button uh, on the camera. And uh, conveniently, Nikon also shows a graphic of what the aperture looks like at different settings. And that's kind of cool. And then everything else is prominently displayed. Here, here is a, it's a fraction of a second, 1 25th of a second. Um, now, if you have a can and it has a different display and it takes more steps to achieve this, uh, the first step is to press the live view button uh, to bring the exposure display onto the LCD. Uh, the next step is to press the shutter button slightly to activate the light meter uh, so we can change those numbers. Here we see an exposure of uh, a fifth of a second at f2.8. Uh, here we see an exposure of 6 seconds at f14. Uh, we know this is 6 seconds and not a sixth of a second because there's a quotation mark next to the number indicating that the exposure is longer than a second. Just look down in the lower left and you'll see a 0 and then there's a quotation mark and then there's 6. That indicates that it's 6 seconds. In this, it has five, which has no quotation marks, so that's a fifth of a second. That is an important distinction. No matter which camera model you have, they will all display the shutter speed and the f-stop uh, at the bottom of the frame when you look through the viewfinder. So you bring it up to your eye and you press down on the shutter release ever so slightly, and you're going to see a display very much like the one at the bottom with the shutter speed on the left and then next to that, the aperture. The best way to monitor the combination of shutter and aperture is to have the camera up to your eye. Uh, 
So I recommend you shoot photos with your eye up to the viewfinder. You don't use the live view mode. Here's a chart showing the common shutter speeds on digital cameras. Uh, many cameras have more in-between shutter speeds, like a 300th of a second or a 375th of a second, but uh, I've just chosen to show the main ones. The main lesson here is that the shutter speeds of one second or more have a quotation mark next to them. Now this is really important because you don't want to confuse two, which is a half a second, with two quotation mark, which is two full seconds, which is a longer exposure, a fifth of a second or a fiftieth of a second, which is a shorter exposure, a tenth of a second or a two hundredth of a second. And look down at the bottom, which is a longer exposure, two quotation mark or just two? Uh, the bottom one is, is pretty darn important because that's two seconds, and then the next one is just a half a second. Now, the longer the shutter is open, the more the movement is captured. And here's uh, a person walking downstairs with a flashlight, and it's a two-second exposure, and you see the smearing of the flashlight. In this uh, set of examples, uh, up in the upper left, uh, we have F32, and we have a two-second exposure, and you see that uh, the person holding the flashlight is just almost missing, and then the, but the flashlight is registering. On the lower right, it is F5 at a 15th of a second. That's a much shorter uh, shutter speed than the two seconds in the upper left, and it is capturing the person on the stairs. A little blurry because it's, you know, 15th is still pretty slow, but you can see the difference in the length of time that the shutter is open in these examples. And it's really, uh, it's really shown by the length of the smearing from the flashlight. This is a 12 second exposure without a flashlight. Uh, the person didn't even show up in the picture. It's actually me. I ran up and down the stairs uh, twice and I didn't even show because at 12 second exposure, I'm not standing still long enough to even register uh, on the picture. So um, now a couple of other things about shutter speeds. Uh, you'll see that I have an arrow down at the bottom that shows a 30th of a second and that's the longest shutter speed um, that most people can hold steadily. Uh, a longer exposure than a 30th risks some movement. Uh, I like to shoot to stop motion entirely. I like to use a fast shutter speed like a 500th of a second. So this is a long shutter speed or a short exposure. Is it a long exposure or a short exposure? Is this a long exposure or a short exposure? Now let's talk a little about, about ISO. You've probably heard about the ISO setting in your camera. Um, if the aperture controls the flow of light and the shutter controls the time of the light, the ISO controls the pressure, like the water pressure. We can lighten or darken our image with ISO settings because it controls the sensitivity of our camera sensor. ISO is like the volume control on a radio. So here we see that uh, louder is brighter. In other words, when the uh, ISO is set to 100, it's a fairly dark image. And when it's set to 800, it's a bright image. So we're increasing the um, sensitivity of the sensor and that's making things brighter when we use a higher ISO setting. Now this is a typical outdoor viewfinder display with our eye up to the viewfinder and we see a couple of people walking down a trail and it's a 250th of a second, the aperture is f11, uh, and the ISO is, is set at 400. This is what I consider to be the ISO setting that I would keep my camera on most of the time. We don't need a high ISO outside. 400 is quite adequate for most shooting. When we go inside, we're going to see that the indoor 
viewfinder display, we're going to see that it looks pretty dark. And what we need to do is we need to change the ISO to a higher number. You'll notice that the ISO has gone uh, up to 1600. Here it was 400. We had plenty of light. Here we need more sensitivity. So we change it to 1600. And that is a big jump. That is a big jump from 400 to 600. Um, and that's what we'll need in darker situations. This is a typical night viewfinder display. And in this image, we've had to go up to a half a second. We'll need a tripod for that. Uh, the aperture is at f8. And the ISO, uh, I had to raise the ISO to ISO 3000 to get more collection of light to make the image brighter. Now, what are the drawbacks of high ISO settings? You might ask yourself, well, you know, why don't I just have it on ISO 3000 all the time? Well, uh, extremely high ISO settings degrade the image quality. In the image on the left, this close-up of a doll face, you can see that ISO 200, you can see very smooth skin of that doll rendered at ISO 200. But on the right at uh, ISO 3200, you get a lot of grain, a lot of noise, and basically that is the equivalent of static. When you don't have a good reception on your radio, you turn up the volume and you get a stronger signal, but you also get more static. And that's what happens on your camera. It's just the visual version of static. So we want to keep our ISO at a moderate level unless we absolutely need it to be a lot higher. Um, the shutter and the aperture must be in balance to achieve the proper exposure. And sometimes a change in ISO is necessary as in the nighttime photos that I talked about. So here we have my nephew's daughter, and she's by a window, and I had to go to a 60th at f8, and that was what the P exposure recommended, and it, it was a good exposure. Now, if I was to override that, in other words, uh, open up the aperture more, I'm gonna get an overexposure. Here, uh, it's a 60th at f8, but an, I've widened the aperture in this one to a 60th at f4. Uh, and that is too much light. I had to go to the manual mode to do this. You can see that uh, we want to have these shutter and aperture settings in concert with each other. And we don't want to have a, a shutter speed that's too slow or an aperture that's too wide because it'll overexpose the image. This is uh, an aperture that was too small. It's a uh, 60th at f16, and it's underexposed. So you can see that it's too dark. So here are the three images. The center one is f8. It was the best choice. The P mode will usually choose the right exposure, but not always. And in those not always situations, that's where you want to go to your manual mode. But P in most situations will be good. You can rotate the shutter dial, the thumb wheel, and you'll get different exposure combinations. Here, the good one is a 60th at f8. If we slowed the shutter speed down to a 30th, the camera would automatically go to f11. It would compensate, and the photograph would look pretty much the same. Now, how do you know which setting is best for your particular subject in the P mode? Well, you, you have to review each new setup on your LCD. Uh, and if it's too dark or too light, you need to make adjustments. Okay, so in the P mode, the camera is always trying to get the right exposure, no matter what shutter speed or aperture you choose. This gives you many exposure combinations. If you do not have a tripod, choose a setting with a shutter speed of a 30th of a second or faster to minimize your camera shake. That's for general purpose shooting. Now here we're gonna see the difference a shutter speed will make. In this photograph, the woman running, in the upper left, it's a pretty fast shutter speed, and then the one next to it is at 125th of a second. It, there's slight blurring in the background because the camera is panning with her, but it's not much. In the lower, we have a much longer shutter speed, a tenth of a second. A camera went to f22 to compensate. 
and we see that there's a lot of motion with the subject at a tenth of a second. Let's do our motion study assignment one. Uh, we're going to have two photos on one screen and we're going to vary the shutter speeds uh, using our P mode. We're going to take a photo of a moving subject with a slow shutter speed and that's between let's say two seconds and a half a second. We have to use a tripod for this and uh, we, if you're having trouble achieving a slow shutter speed because there's a lot of light, you may have to lower your ISO setting. So here we see a waterfall and it's at a slow shutter speed. Then we're going to take another photo of the exact same subject with a faster shutter speed to stop the motion. And if you're having trouble achieving a faster shutter speed because of the light levels outside, you, you can raise your ISO. Uh, but we want to have a same subject, a moving subject, with a slow and a fast shutter speed. Uh, these are some examples of motion done by a student. We see a thousandth of a second in the upper left, and as we slow the shutter down uh, to the lower right, we see a fifteenth of a second uh, with a lot of motion. These were very good examples by a student. Uh, here's another good example by a student. Uh, just uh, water dripping from a faucet. At a thousandth of a second, we freeze those water droplets, uh, but at three second exposure, it just looks like a kind of a ghostly image of water. We don't see any definition of the moving subject. That's also a very good example. So let's get our cameras out and do a quick test using what we've learned. Uh, this will prepare us to complete the motion study one assignment. Stop the video here so you can do that.